What's up guys, mainly hockey cards here, and I'm going to keep this intro short and sweet. While we wait for Series 2, here's a complete guide to every Young Guns rookie in 2020-21 Series 1 and 2 with my thoughts on their investment potential based on a grade from F to A+. This video took a ton of time and research, so liking the video and subscribing would mean the world to me. You can always change your mind later. Please do your own due diligence and research before investing and enjoy the video. Starting it off, Alexi Lafreniere is easily one of the most controversial rookies out of this class, despite being the most hyped. He hasn't lived up to generational expectations, but I wouldn't be concerned about him unless we're seeing no real growth by year three. Of course, many people are quick to label bust, but he's 20 years old, has already played 100 NHL games, and looks to be developing nicely with his all-around game, too. Points will come. Reed Duke hasn't played an NHL game, is 26 years old, and has put up relatively weak numbers at the AHL level. Alexander Alexiev is poised to be an NHL defenseman, but still remains to be seen where he actually fits in. Is he a top four guy, or is he more of a third pairing depth player? It's still rather unclear at this point. Broberg has had an underwhelming NHL start with two points in 22 games, but at just 20 years old, the mobile 6'3 defenseman looks like he could develop into a top three defenseman for a team, and if that team is indeed the Oilers, there could be a lot of added offensive upside and value. Bowen Byram had 11 points in 18 games before getting injured earlier this season. At just 20 years old, he'll be another huge defenseman for the Avalanche, who top to bottom are disgustingly good. Could be a great value purchase, given he's injured and overshadowed by Makar. Michael DiPietro will need more seasoning before we see him in an NHL role. However, at just 22, he does have loads of potential, and it might be a guy we forget about for a couple years, only to have a strong emergence down the line. Kiviranta has seemingly gotten worse since a pretty decent 2020-21 season, and at 26, I don't think he is much more than being a depth forward. Joseph Wall is intriguing simply because of the market he plays in. He has shown promise, but has also been injury prone. With how goalies are and the fragile state of Toronto goaltending, he could be in the net consistently sometime within the next couple of years. Josh Norris is one of the best young guns to get and is still pretty underrated. He can score, will probably be a point-per-game player in the near future, and has all the tools to become a first-line offensive threat. Geeky has 18 points in 57 games this year for a bad Kraken team. He will continue to be a regular NHLer and still has some offensive upside too. Vanacek and Samsonov are on a timeshare in Washington, but Vanacek is having the better year. He's still relatively young and on a Capitals team that is still quite good. There's some solid potential here for a budget play. Lucas Carlson is 24 years old and has had an okay year with the Panthers, though he's having trouble with staying in the lineup. Being on the Panthers is a nice plus, but I don't see too much upside with him. Ty DeLandria is coming up on his 22nd birthday and has limited NHL experience. He does have 37 points in 53 AHL games this season. That's fourth on his team in scoring, being at least five years younger than the top three. He does seem to have a bright future as a two-way forward, but the market in Dallas does not help. Dylan Coughlin has a respectable 12 points in 52 games this season, but 24 and behind some very good defensemen, I find it hard to believe he brings much potential and value to the table. Gabe Velarde is a player whose stock has risen to a projected superstar valuation in the past and then fallen to a first liner, to a second liner, and it's unclear where he actually settles at. He's a point per game in the AHL, but only has one point in 13 NHL games this season. I would lean toward a top six role, and being on the Kings, who are very heavy on young offensive weapons, this is a great thing, but there are some doubts with him. The 22-year-old defenseman, Pierre-Olivier Joseph, has impressed at the AHL level and has performed well at the NHL level. Being a defenseman, value is inherently harder to garner from hobbyists, but if he becomes a solid top four option in a market like Pittsburgh, his value could increase. Kaut projects to be an eventual middle six winger. It's unclear where he stands in the future of the plans for the Avalanche, though, as the strength of their team could very well push him out to a different organization entirely. His all-around play is his biggest asset. Due to a variety of factors, including injuries, it remains to be seen if Benson can perform at the NHL level. He's done well at the AHL level, but it hasn't come together in the league above. Time is starting to tick for the former exceptional status player, as right now he looks more like a depth forward than anything else. Korshkov has been in the KHL the past two seasons and has performed pretty well. 
Unlike many others that go back overseas, I won't rule out a return for the big man with a goal-scoring touch. Lindstrom is no Lindstrom, though he has put up a decent little rookie campaign for Detroit. He does seem to keep getting better, which is nice, but I don't think gets to the point of being more than a top four option on defense. If his offensive side takes an uptick, he does play in a strong market and his cards could see a little more value. Victor Soderstrom just turned 21 and I'm very excited about his future, though hopefully it's not in front of more than just 5,000 fans at Arizona State. Soderstrom could very well be a top pairing defenseman in the NHL and also has offensive tools with a physical presence. Is he going to be a McCarr or Fox? No, but I think he could be a nice little sleeper. Yoel Levy was once very hyped for what seems like a very long time ago. As it stands right now, he is a pretty big bust, but at 23 still has time to make amends and be a decent puck-moving defenseman. Connor Ingram has performed admirably at the AHL level and could be a reliable NHL goaltender in the future. It would be hard to take playing time from the Nashville tandem, but a change of scenery could do the trick for a guy who is a feel-good story. Liam Foody has had success at the AHL level, but little success at the NHL level. He just turned 22 and should get opportunities for the Columbus Blue Jackets, but it remains to be seen if he lives up to his first round selection in a top six role or becomes a middle six or depth player. Consistency will be key. Alexander True has put together several decent AHL seasons, but hasn't put it together at the NHL level. However, being a part of Seattle, True will get every opportunity to make a name for himself. Bodin had 10 points in 9 AHL games and 6 points in 19 NHL games last season. However, this season he has just 10 points in 50 AHL games. This is not a good look for a young player, but let's hope this season is more about developing his two-way game and having the offense come back with time. Thomas Harley is just 20 years old, and while still young, his outputs for the season have been less than stellar with 2 points in 23 NHL games. However, he is very offensively gifted, and his offense should come along in the near future for a Dallas team that looks strong. Jonas Johansson, a goalie that has historically had bad numbers on bad teams and had good numbers on good teams. However, this season it's been all bad, but he is a goalie with some potential, and maybe he goes on a run somewhere. Parkins is in his second year removed from the minors, but hasn't shown too much offensively and is ultimately going to be a bottom six forward. Belzeal is 30 years old and doesn't offer much upside, but could maybe get a couple more cups of tea. Ryan McLeod had a point per game in the AHL last season and now has 15 points in 54 NHL games this season. He looks like he could be a middle to bottom six forward in the making with some decent upside. Igor Zamula is a 21-year-old defenseman in the AHL, going half a point per game. He has only seen three games of NHL action, so it's hard to say where he projects on a mess of a Flyers team going forward. Mikey Anderson has played over 100 games at the NHL level already at just age 22, and while that is great, he doesn't add much offensively. He's a steady two-way and physical defenseman that will likely be in a bottom four role most of the time. Connor McMichael, who just turned 21, is one of my personal favorite young guns that I feel is very undervalued. With an aging offensive core for the Capitals, McMichael is going to have to step up. He was named to the AHL's all-rookie team last season and has had a modest NHL rookie season with 17 points in 60 games. Jason Robertson, if not for Kirill Kaprizov, would have taken the Calder last season. An electric player with solid players around him, Robertson is going to be a first-line player for years to come. I think his cards are still undervalued. However, being in the Dallas market does hurt him a bit. Emil Larmy's lack of success in North America has seen him play most of the past two seasons overseas. Could he come back? Maybe. But right now, it doesn't look like that'll happen. Hopes are high for Nick Robertson in Toronto, as he is over a point per game in the AHL this season at just 20 years of age. The NHL production hasn't come just yet, but things could definitely materialize as early as next season, or even the playoffs for that matter. Philip Kurashev has mirrored his production from last season with 16 points in 56 games. With a Blackhawks team that is rebuilding, he will be given opportunities in the top six, and if he makes the most of them, could be playing with some very solid talent. Arguably the biggest piece of the Eichel trade, Peyton Krebs has 14 points in 30 games with the Sabres and looks like the real deal, which is great news for the Buffalo faithful. He could very well end up being a top-line forward, which would be a sweet addition to a young group with a lot of potential. The former first-round pick Shane Bowers stock has gone down considerably in the past two AHL seasons with just 17 points in 61 games. 
He's also yet to play an NHL game. Will he turn it around? We'll see. Though almost 24, Kiefer Bellows has turned in a respectable 13 points in 33 games this season for a struggling Islanders team. He's shown some signs of promise and I think could be a sneaky play from this class of young guns if you can get his stuff on the cheap. Mikhail Burden's first two seasons were better than his last two, but don't sleep completely on the still relatively young goaltender who could show some NHL promise someday. He's a guy that is often found in the 50 cent boxes and I think maybe see where a dollar or two goes. Vitaly Kratsov has performed admirably at the KHL level, but hasn't done the same at the AHL or NHL levels. After being a surprising omission from the opening lineup for the Rangers at the beginning of this season, he's requested a trade and has confirmed he will play for other teams. If he develops as he should, he's an easy top six forward with first line potential, but will we actually get that from him remains to be seen. Artem Zagadulin wasn't all too great at the AHL level and was poor for his one game in the NHL, almost 27 and back in Europe after a very short North American stint. There is a possibility that Carter Hart and Sandstrom don't work out in Philadelphia, and barring a trade, Ustamenko would be the next best young goalie. He's still a few years out, but like Berdin, might be a guy to spend a couple bucks on, forget about, and then cross your fingers. With Kadobin and Bishop out of the picture, it appears that Ottinger will indeed be the goalie of the future for a team featuring top-end young talent. With how he's played so far this season, it's a sign of great things to come. Jake Evans is inevitably a big part of the Canadiens' rebuild and could one day be a 40 to 50 point guy, especially if young talent around him develops. With his young guns still pretty cheap and in a great market, if he went on a hot streak or got paired with some first-line talents, it could be a pretty solid play. It looks like Liljegren has finally found his groove and has 17 points in 46 games this season for Toronto. With room to grow around an increasingly lethal core, he should be a top four defenseman in a hot market with some offensive upside, though I do think Rasmus Sandin will outpace his value. Frankie, while he is 31 years of age, has put together three strong NHL seasons, primarily as a backup for a loaded Colorado team. He's arguably the best backup in the league, and if he sees the starting reins come to him, who knows what happens. Woohoo, a checklist. Checklists always sell, though. Now, on to Series 2. Kirill Kaprizov is clearly the real deal here, arguably the most exciting player to watch in the league besides McDavid. He's a top-end talent and is already a superstar very early on in his young career. Chatfield is a decent depth option at defense, but offers virtually zero offensive upside. Sen didn't perform all too well in two years of North American hockey and is already re-signed for another year for Davos in Switzerland. Maybe he gets another chance down the line, but his play really needs to take a turn for the better. Quinney hasn't seen NHL time since the 1920 season. Decent numbers in the AHL, a little on the older side. Eh. Romanov is in arguably the strongest hockey market and is a very popular player. He has all of the tools to make him either a top four or even top pairing defenseman. He's had a slow buildup since coming over from Russia, but he's been a bright light in a dim Canadian season, and the potential is 100% here. Very bright future for Ty Smith in New Jersey. That team is coming along, and a lot of players are ahead of schedule. While Smith is still fine-tuning his game and developing more of a two-way presence, he has an extraordinary amount of offensive potential. The market hurts a bit, but that should change soon. Mason Marchment has come out of seemingly nowhere with 36 points in 38 games this season. Could he be a superstar in the making? Maybe, but... If he keeps up the pace, you can't ignore him, even if he is already 27 years old. Like Michael Bunting, maybe he was just a guy that needed a chance. Ian Mitchell has been somewhat of a disappointing player after drawing comparisons to a similar play style to that of Duncan Keith. He does have 28 points in 47 AHL games this season, but like Bodin, is working on his two-way game and could soon become an NHL regular. However, it's unclear if that's in a top four or bottom four role. Hakenpa is nearly 30 years old, and while he is an NHL regular, offers virtually no offensive output or upside. Pagansky is having a solid year in the AHL, but has no points in 22 NHL games over three seasons and is already 26. Again, not much upside. 
Islanders played the Rangers the other night, and Ilya Sorokin stole the show. The Battle of Sorokin and Chesterkin will be a primetime event for the rest of their careers, and Sorokin is undeniably a superstar in the making, with an Islanders team that will build around him and Barzell. Niels Hoglander had a very solid rookie season with the Canucks, but hasn't replicated the same success this year. Even so, many Canucks players have struggled, so I'm not too concerned about the dip in production and would expect him to bounce back going forward. He's also in a very strong market and in a good position to cement himself as a top six forward. Malosh has six points in 34 NHL games this season and ultimately looks like he'll equate to a bottom pairing defenseman. Brandon Crawley hasn't played an NHL game, though he was in the bubble with the Rangers in 2020. He's only played two AHL games this season in total due to injury. It just doesn't look good. Philippe de Rogiers has spent most of the season in the ECHL, and while that's not necessarily a bad thing, he is already 27, and that is indeed a bad thing. Interesting situation with Jordan Gross, probably worth monitoring. Depth defenseman with four points in his first 10 NHL games, eh, that's all right. Almost 27 years old, eh, however, has 52 points in 50 games this season in the AHL. That is ridiculous, and a team will likely take a shot at him and see what happens. Thurkoff has decent offensive upside with solid size, but looks like he'd be more of a bottom six forward given that he hasn't played an NHL game since 2019-20 and is also re-upping in Switzerland for next season. Rights belong to the Blue Jackets, and they could make a comeback, but don't cross your fingers. Brome was simply an experiment that didn't pan out. He's spent the entire season in Davos, where he's over a point per game, after registering just two points in 26 NHL games last season. Defensemen don't get too much love, but Keandre Miller looks like the real deal and will be a mainstay on the Rangers' defense core for years to come. Offense will come with time, and he's surrounded by game-changing players, so his value and offensive output should increase. Mikola is a solid depth defenseman for the Blues, but doesn't offer much offensive upside. Entwistle has 11 points in 48 games this season and projects as a solid bottom six option. Angelo most likely caps out as a third line checking forward with a solid two-way game. Prisky has had several decent years in the AHL, but doesn't really have much to show for it. Like the previous few players, looks like he caps out on a depth role. A former elite scorer in the NCAA and a Hobie Baker finalist, John Leonard hasn't been able to replicate the same success at the NHL or AHL levels, but with a solid campaign in the AHL this year, could be on track to provide support in a middle six role. Pino has put together three decent AHL campaigns, but can't seem to make it over the hump. Likely, if he amounts to an NHL player, will be another third or fourth line depth option. Calfoot has seven points in 41 games this season for the Lightning. Once heralded as a potential top pair talent, the transition to pro hockey hasn't been smooth, but he is only 23, and if he can stay in Tampa, he will get some really good looks, and he still has lots of potential left in him. 21 points in 67 games this year for Vegas for Colazar, which is actually pretty solid because he is most known to be more of a defensive forward, but if offense is coming, I don't think anyone is complaining. Regula is another solid defenseman in the Chicago system and has 22 points in 33 AHL games this season. At just 21 years old, could very well find himself in a top four spot on an NHL team sometime in the future. Legison doesn't offer much offensive upside, and the only thing stopping him from a D-level rating is that he's in a very solid market in Montreal. Unfortunately, Kevleniex is no longer with us, having passed last summer. I do believe that his cards will always hold value, but you guys understand what I'm saying here. Cole Smith hasn't done much in limited NHL action, and while he has put together two decent AHL seasons, he's already 26 and the clock is ticking. Stutzla is another A-plus talent in my opinion. His two-way game keeps getting better and better. His supporting cast is taking form, and offensively, he's incredibly gifted. Even with how much I like Lafreniere or Kaprizov, Stutzla could very well be the best young gun from this entire year when all is said and done sometime down the line. Radish has 33 points in his past 72 AHL games as a defenseman and is 26. Looking at how his career has panned out over time, I'm not sure what he can really bring to the table. Suter has had a pretty good start to his NHL career, notching 55 points in 120 games despite being on two pretty bad teams. 
He looks like a for sure second line player and being in an original six market could see increased value down the road. I'm sure this grade is controversial given Barabanov's 27 year old age, but ever since landing in San Jose, he's really found his groove. He has 43 points in his first 66 games for the Sharks and honestly looks like he still has the potential to even grow into a first line player, which is crazy with how poor he started out his career in Toronto. Could be a solid low end buy. Maillet is just a player that didn't pan out. He put together a successful AHL career, didn't impress in limited NHL action, and is now a really solid player in the KHL. Would not count on him coming back, though. Latunov lacks consistency and, after a strong AHL season, has put together two subpar ones to follow that up. Tough to say if he fits an NHL mold in the future. Yellison is a depth defenseman with a physical edge despite his small stature. However, he's back across the pond in the KHL, and while he could return to North America someday, I don't think he brings too much value back with him. Sharon Govich has been a great find for the Devils and will continue to be a big piece of that rebuild. At only 23, he's a strong second liner with first line potential. The demo looks like he could be a depth checking forward someday, but not much more than that. The market does help, though. Tampa Bay just sold their future for Hagel after he put up 21 goals and 37 points with Chicago in 55 games this season. Given how much Tampa sent for Hagel, there is no doubt he will be a big part of their future and possibly dynasty. With Tampa's potent offense, I could see Hagel becoming a point-per-game player. Nijov just turned 24 but has been injured the entire season. Hard to tell where his future goes from here. Kasha just hasn't put it together in North America and is back overseas in the Czech League, not to be confused with Andre Kasha. Steven Lorenz is a good depth checking forward, someone that I personally enjoy watching play, but he doesn't bring too much offense to the table and thus his value is relatively obsolete unless he moves up in the lineup. Cousins will no doubt be a great centerman in this league. It's just a matter of time and a matter of how great he actually will be. At 21, he's put up 31 points in 61 games this season, which is really solid for a Sabres team that is still developing. Stuart Skinner has looked pretty good for an Edmonton team that has really struggled in net this season. At the AHL level, he's been consistently good too. At 23, who knows if he's their goaltender of the future, but he's doing a great job of sticking around. Hopes were high for Kevin Langanen after last season, but then Flurry was brought in and as a backup this season has performed poorly. However, now that Flurry is gone again, maybe he turns it around. It's tough to say what his future looks like. Joel Kelman's tenure as a shark was marred by inconsistency and he's overseas in Sweden again. I would just avoid him altogether. Braden Burke was over a point per game in the AHL level last season, but hasn't seen the same success this year and is already 25. It's not looking too great at the moment, but there is still some time. Lastly, checklists do sell, and it's two good names. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and perhaps learned a thing or two about players you've probably just glossed over. If you did enjoy it, consider leaving a like and subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind later. Thank you, everyone.